Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, again, we are at the Detroit City Fieldhouse. I'm here with Georgie Porgy Grinders. As you guys have been watching this pre preseason series, you know it's been mostly just technical work, lots of exercises with the ball at your feet. But because we were so far from preseason, I didn't want to push the intensity so hard. But now we're only a few weeks away, which means we really have to start uh, increasing the intensity. We have to start increasing the duration of the work time during the exercises. So we're going to do a high intensity session today. And we're going to finish with a little bit of fitness today, which is actually one of the fitness tests that we do at the preseason for Detroit City FC. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Action. So as you guys are watching the uh, session, I wanna walk you through all of the exercises and explain to you guys why I picked those exercises. Like I said, it's a uh, fitness slash conditioning session today, so very high intensity. We'll start off getting straight into it. Wanna get his heartbeat up right from the beginning. This is one that I used to do with Isak, if you guys used to watch the videos back in the day. We have three different size hurdles and the progressions are left foot, right foot, and then both feet at the same time. So it's three sets per hurdle plus an extra set at the end. So it's a total of 10 sets. The last set is with the biggest hurdle. And instead of going one foot over at a time, he's jumping with both feet. So I believe we did 15 touches every single time, which totals out to be around 30 seconds per set. And then the rest time is one to one. So 30 seconds off, 30 seconds on. So really, really good. For the very first exercise, you're gonna be pretty exhausted by the time you're done doing this. You can go up to a minute if you'd like, but we're doing 10 sets of these total. So do the math, it's 10 times 15, which is 150 touches, anywhere from 150 to 200 touches right in the first exercise. As for the next exercise, we're gonna do another simple passing pattern. So this one, regardless of whether it's high intensity session, fitness session, conditioning, whatever, you can still do a lot of exercises like these just because it focuses on some passing variations, some first touch, some one touch, some two touch, different types of ball touches just in general. So we did three different variations. I spaced them out a little bit more than I would because it is a fitness session. So he's gotta cover a little bit more ground. So this one's basically giving us a little bit of rest before we go into the next exercise, which I know is going to be extremely intense for Georgie. So when you're doing Doing sessions like this you do want to incorporate some rest but you also want to alternate the exercises so that you're not doing fitness exercise after fitness exercise after fitness exercise so one will be really high intensity and then maybe the next one will be medium intensity and then you kind of flip-flop back and forth so that 20 minutes into the session your uh, your player is not already gassed and already exhausted and already wants to go home so try to vary it a little bit but we're still trying to keep his heart rate up still trying to maintain that tempo of the training session So this exercise is probably gonna be the hardest one out of the entire session. I got this one from Barcelona. I'll leave a link in the description below as well so you guys can go check out that video. And I just adapted it to make it into a fitness exercise because they were using it more for like a speed and agility type exercise. Pretty much you just bring some hurdles, some passing gates, some agility pulls. He's gonna start on one end. He's gonna jump over every single one of the passing gates before he grabs a ball. He's gonna dribble the ball as he jumps over the passing gates on the way back and then leave it at the cone from where he started. So the reason why it's so intense is because those jumping motions and then twisting and cutting it's really gonna tire him out and on top of that he has to be dribbling a soccer ball and if he takes a bad touch he's gonna have to run a little bit extra to get it and all sorts of little things like that so six balls total and we always finish with a sprint back or going back through the passing gates so as soon as he leaves that last ball he's still got to go back one more time so it's extremely tiring you'll see how Georgie started with a very fast pace and then he realized pretty quickly as he started getting tired that he wasn't gonna be able to maintain it so he started slowing down and by the end he's just barely making it through so again really pushing that heart rate and really pushing his aerobic capacity so that next time he does this exercise it'll be a little bit easier it's a great exercise and I guarantee if you try it you're gonna be absolutely exhausted after you're done
12 seconds later. Five hours later. So for the next exercise, we are going to incorporate the blaze pads. These things are fantastic. I absolutely love them. If you guys want to go ahead and buy these, I'll leave a link in the description where you guys can get a little bit of a discount and Coach Javi gets a little bit of kickback from each sale so it helps pay Coach Javi's bills. But the reason why I like using these so much is because there's a lot of different things that you can do with them, different exercises, just to make the session a little bit more fun, get the brain working a little bit, make them think, and then give them some visual cues to work with during the session. So the way we're gonna incorporate them is I have set up a few goals and I've set up uh, four pods in the corner. We got the home pod as well. So every time he does a rep, he's gonna have to go back to the home pod, touch the home pod, and then it's gonna reset. So all it is is very simple. He'll start with the home pod. One of the blaze pods on the corners will light up. He's gonna have to run around that corner he'll either receive a pass from kit man moy or myself depending on where he's facing and then he's just going to have to play it into one of the three goals obviously if he's facing towards me then he's going to play one of the side goals and if he's facing towards kit man moy he'll just play that middle goal there this one goes for about a minute and 15 and then we did three sets i believe so it's pretty intense just like the last one that we did because he's constantly running as soon as he plays that pass into the goal he has to go back to the home pod hit the home pod and then depending on which one lights up, he might have to run diagonally all the way across or maybe just off to the side a little bit, but it's continuous running for a minute and 15. And obviously you also want him to be accurate with his passes as well. So making sure that when he receives that pass, he takes a touch, he looks up at the goal and he finds a good pass into the goal. You don't have to use the blaze pods. You can get creative. You can just number off the cones if you'd like and someone's calling off a number. But every time I use the blaze pods, it just makes the session a little bit more fun and it gives him a visual cue for him to see exactly where he needs to go because in a, in a game, that's exactly what's gonna happen. He's gonna have visual cue, whether his team is wearing the white jerseys, the red jerseys, the blue jerseys, he's gonna know based off of those colors, whether he can go into that space, whether he can pass it to that player and so forth. So that's why I like using the blaze pods. Again, if you wanna purchase them, go ahead and uh, check out the link in my description. So if we're doing a high intensity session and we're really trying to push that cardiovascular fitness, then what we like to do is some sort of running without the ball at the end of the session. I know that this is a part that everyone hates. Nobody likes to do this. Everybody always wants to be with the ball at their feet, but this is just a good way for him to get a little bit more fit. So the one that we're gonna do today is actually one of the fitness tests that we're gonna run at Detroit City FC's preseason, and it's the 50 meter runs. So you're just gonna map out 50 meters, and they're gonna run for six minutes continuously, and they're gonna count on their own how many times they get a 50 meter run. So from one side to the other, which is 50 meters, that's one, and then when they go back, that's two, and then three, four, five, six, and so on for six minutes continuous. The goal that they're trying to hit is 30, and I believe Georgia during preseason last year got 35. So right now he just got 26, but obviously he's still about a month out from preseason or a little bit less than a month out for preseason. So we want them to hit those targets during preseason because we need them to peak at the right moment. If Georgie was hitting 36 or 37 right now, I might be a little bit worried because he still has a month before preseason even starts. And then on top of that, he has another month before we actually start playing in the season. So peaking a little too early would be a cause for burnout. Um, cause for injury and stuff like that. So we want him to be at a good base level so that when preseason comes and the season starts, he's ready to go at 100% and he's in really good shape. But 26 is a pretty good score considering we still have about three weeks before we actually need him to be hitting 30 to 35 for the 50 meter run. So there's a lot of different exercises you guys can find like this on the internet. We've just tried a bunch out. Some of them we liked, some of them we didn't like. Some of them we had in previous preseasons and we're not gonna bring back. And then others have just become the staples for, uh, for preseason and how we measure the fitness of the players. So that's, uh, that's the last exercise. All right, my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed it, this little fitness session. If you have any questions regarding maybe why I chose these exercises or why we did some of the things that we did, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. And um, yeah, that's it for me. Until next time, and adios, muchachos.